worldwide wood turn. It's at your wood turning club. And my monitor is down a little bit. So is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what we're saying, Eddie. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, stop sharing. That gives me an idea of where the edit it point is. Uh, and we start with a good evening, everybody. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and you're on your wood turning club. That's Worldwide Wood Turners. Um, we're developing our website. We have our email address, worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. Uh, we go to YouTube. Um, we have a newsletter, and we have other features. All this to promote wood turning. I want to welcome aboard everybody tonight. Um, I see we have a couple of you. We got a UK. I think we have one Australia. Um, any other visitors to see them want to say hello? Do it now. Okay. <laughs> Nobody talking tonight. Oh, you'll crank up. What the heck? Uh, we got a lot of gallery items in this week. And I've asked y'all to show some things. And if you want to be away from the keyboard for a few moments while you go grab another piece you like to show a brag on, or give us an idea of what you're doing, how you do it, the questions are going to come up. How big is it? How'd you turn it? And what'd you finish it with? If I know that, I got a chance of going down your road. I'm not going to copy your work. I'm making enough mistakes on my own. I'm not going to do yours. So if you've got an item for the gallery, please send it to us. But it's about time for me to go to the membership gallery uh, or the members gallery. And I can do that and get this full screen. Wait a minute. I don't think you're seeing it. What screen are you seeing, Ronnie? Step center. You got the step center up. That's not the one I want. Okay. I got something in the wrong order. That didn't work out. Um, I will have to get that up on the screen in a moment. But, um, you know, we, we get, I just popped it up so I can bounce around a little bit. What I just shared with you, um, or by purely by accident, um, and a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about um, centers and holding things, and a step center came into the conversation. And folks don't really understand what a step center is or how it works. I'm trying to get the right screen here. I don't have any idea what happened to it. It's on the screen. Um, shut it down and try it one more time. What oh, had all worked out? Uh, which screen are you seeing, Ronnie? The step center. You seeing that right now? Yeah, it's okay. the uh, breakdown of the step. All right, I can't see it. I don't know what what I did wrong. I got one foot off the ground and everything. All right, this is a step center. I can picture what I what I, what I did on this. This is a for fitting in a Morse taper. Now I can also hold my step center in my one way chuck, and I've done it with a Vicmark chuck and a couple other chucks, um, and you slip it in there. Enough of the tip will stick out where it still operate as a step center. Um, it fits into the number two Morse taper. That little groove on the shaft is for to keep material from building up when you slide it in. So it has a, the rust, corrosion, goop, dump, glue, whatever, as a place to slide out and get you a good bearing on it. A tap on the tip will help, but tap it with wood because on the tip end, you see those little teeth going around? That's what holds the wood. That's what bites into the wood. That's what we call them teeth. And the center point is spring loaded. Now, when you're turning something on this, if you get a little bit of, of, of a catch, we don't get catches. If you get a little catch or something and you stop the piece you're turning, say a rounding out a rolling pin or an ink pen blank or a shaft or a bowl, anything like that. If you get a catch, the small teeth will slip, but the pin will hold and the piece will, will stop turning. Um, that better than getting a catch and throwing it off the lathe. But then you just take about a half turn on your tail stock and you push it back on the piece a little bit more and go back to it again. Uh, I love them, they work great. They come in, what I found is two sizes, seven eighths, I've got two like that, and then inch and a quarter. Uh, I think I have one like that, but I, I don't pull it out because I love that seven eighths inch. 
um, and it's a step center. And if I can get to that screen, I've got something else to show you on it. Um, but we, I can't get to it right now. Uh, we'll fix that in a few minutes. Um, if you don't have a step center, consider it. Um, it's one of those useful pieces of equipment that you can throw on a batch and a pop. Um, if you're doing a tagna nut, but this is rather big, seven eighths. But if you're doing some, something else like that that's irregular, uh, you're having a problem thinking about how to hold it, and you want to put a tendon on it, if you can put it in step center and live center and you hold it, you can cut your, 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 your uh, tendon on the end and then pull it out and put it in the chuck. You don't have to turn it on that, just put your tendon on. And I think it was Dane um, that told us and showed us last week or so about a, uh, a little gauge that he made for sizing your jaws to the right size. Um, I take a little flack on that. Um, about bigger is better, bigger is better. But you can't go bigger than the jaws. To get the maximum effect, of, you got to be about the right size of the jaws. So if you think you need a bigger tendon, you need a bigger set of jaws. And don't stretch them. They do break. They don't hold part properly. The therapy work will break it off. Um, Dan, are you in there with us this evening? I see his name up on a, he's on, he's on up there, the, uh, the chat right now. All right. Um, today I saw something in one of my forum type things about using a face mask when you do CA. Um, here's the deal. If you're using CA on any wood that's got any degree of moisture, you're going to get a foam off. It's not really a foam. It's, a, it's more of a, a vapor or a fume. But what's happening is the CA is reacting to the moisture in that wood. That doesn't mean you can't use it on a wet wood or moist wood or wood that's not this percent dry and all that. You just got to, your things are going to change. What's going to change is that glue is going to give off a fume. That's right, and unless you're using Paraflex, which doesn't, um, and there's a couple others that say they don't uh, don't have as much fumes, most of them still give off some fumes. Maybe it's not irritating, but it's still coming off because that's what happens in the process of drying. Um, I saw a guy that said he bought one of those big respirators with the mask on it and the fan on the top and all that, uh, and then he got CA on it, and it ruined his lens. Gotcha. You bought a hundred bucks for that hundred dollars. You're gonna bought 15 little six inch fans from Walmart, and all you need was one. And you put it on your headstock and you turn it on and you blow it towards the material. And what happens is that fume can't come up, it gets pushed off. It's not a perfect system, but how long you need it for 30 seconds? And if you think you need more, buy two fans, all right? But be aware. Uh, most glasses don't tolerate CA. Um, these are my $400 prescription glasses. And on one of them right here is a dead spot. And that's where I got CA on it and cleaned it off with acetone. Sound like a good idea, right? Well, it kind of affected the, and it's right where you look down for exacting work. So if it worked on come by exact, I got, I got excuse. But, uh, when you're working with CA, remember, if you're going to wear eyeglasses or glassware, do an overshield or a pair of those safety glasses that you can just slip on and they'll cover your regular eyewear. Um, be, and please protect your eyes. If you're using CA without protecting your eyes, nice seeing you. Yes, that's all. Um, remember, right now we've got some heat warnings out there. I saw where Dallas area is going to have 113 degree heat tomorrow. Hope you're staying hydrated. And I'm not talking about the bubbly hydrate. I'm talking hydrate, a lot of water. I'm catching help from my wife because this is the first day. And yeah, 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 July 1st. First day I'm off restrictions. I can go to shop, I can turn, and do all kinds of things. As long as the boss doesn't catch me. Uh, I went out this morning real early. Can't stay in the yard and eat the cutting. And if the little dog gets out there, I can't find her. So I went out this morning, cranked up the more rode around and cut down all the grass and it lasted about two hours out there 
I was done for the day. I went and got into the air conditioning and worked on some stuff because it was just hot. And I got fussed at because I only took one little bottle of water and I probably needed more. But oh man, I'm rough. I'm tough. You know? Please drink a lot of water. Stay away from salt. That's not your friend. Is Doug with us tonight yet? Doug? I'm waiting here from Doug Rowe, but he is in the military and sometimes they work. Uh, you can get me for that. Um, we had some requests about what do we do about freedom pens. So I'm getting into this for one second. Freedom pens is a program where you and I and that guy over there, we all turn pen kits, and we've talked about this in the past, trim line, slim line, utility line, we're all the perfect size, but whatever you print, whatever you make, we just take we're well, not proud. We don't say they got to be red. They got to be blue. They got to have this finished. They got to have that finished. None of that counts. None of that's in, important. What's important is you turn a pen for our troops. We provide them to an active army member. And that guy gets them to active army troops. Yeah, and he, he targets folks that are in the sand, heading to the sand, heading to the basin, anywhere. He targets the active troops. What I'm asking you is to please spin a couple of pens. Just spin one if you can't do it. Just spin one. They're fantastic seal builders, really. Um, who was it? Bob Moffat was showing us those pieces he made. Um, and that's exactly, uh, oh, no, was it Bob Moffat or Bob Passini? Bob Passini, all right, I'm sorry. Uh, was showing us little pieces he made, the miniatures, and that's exacting work. When Bob did that, his tool usage had to be perfect. He didn't gouge anything out or rip it apart or plow it out the way. He got in with little fine, fine cuts. And his shavings look like little ribbons that comes off. When you turn a pen, you learn how to do that slice. I can turn a pen with a roughing gouge. I don't use it like a roughing gouge. I use it like a gouge with shoulders on it. And I can roll it off on its side, ride the bevel, and do a slice. The reason I'm telling you this is not that you can do that, but when you start working with your tools a little bit finer, your work gets a little bit finer. You don't have to sand nearly as much. Um, you want to have to sand before you put a finish on. You don't have to put a fancy finish on it. In fact, that's very unimportant. But it's one thing that is important. If you turn a freedom pen for us, or for you, if you turn a pen, put a little card in with your pen, who you are and how to contact you. Because you've just made a friend with an active troop member protecting the United States. And those people work for a lot less than we do. And they do a lot more, a lot harder work than we do. And it's the right thing. So I'm quitting beating that drum because that is the way things should be. Ronnie Bunnett's one of my co-hosts and founder of this organization, uh, if it's organized. Ronnie's got an update on our um, the AAW meeting, don't you, Ronnie? I sure do. Can you hear me? I've got you now. All right, you can hear me. First of all, we must be doing something right because we have two special guests tonight. We have uh, a gentleman from the U.K., uh, and we also have uh, Kim Tippin in tonight. And any of you guys that want to learn about uh, uh, what is it? The uh, the liquid? The uh, help me out, Eddie. Uh, the resin. 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 All right. Resin. And uh, Kim Tippin's big into resin. So any of you guys that are are interested in. And uh, Martin from the UK, he is a big time turner, and you can follow him on uh, YouTube along with Tippin. So we are we are very pleased to have them on tonight. Yeah, it's nice. We we are actually looking and soliciting people like that so they can share what they know with us who are trying to know, trying to learn. So if you if you can help us. We'd love to have you in here. Ronnie, what's the deal on the, on the uh, AAW? Okay, the AAW is still July 10th, 11th, and 12th. 
coming up in just a few days. So anybody that's not registered to see it, now's the time to get on and uh, do your uh, do your registration. It's twenty dollars and twenty cents for all three days. You don't have to sit in for uh, three days uh, complete. You know you can come and go as you wish. And it's a, it's a heck of a buy, so we want to put that out. If, if you have uh, registered with the AAW, and if you have something for display, you have till July to, or what we said, Eddie, wait a minute. Uh, July the 3rd to get your pictures in and to, to register anything that you want to be in the galley. If you want to sit in on the classes, you have till July the seventh at midnight to uh, do your registration. Uh, the people that will be there uh, Friday will be Glenn Lucas, Rob Wallace, Rudy Lopez. Saturday, it's going to be Trent Bosch, Mike Mahoney. And Sunday, it'll be uh, Cindy Drozel, Beth Ireland, and Craig Timmerman. So you can really learn a lot by sitting in on these people and learning their tips and tricks. So I would encourage everybody to uh, join in. Just remember now, you don't have to be an AAW member to do this. Uh, so... You're not you're not forced to join anything. Just like you're not forced to join anything with us. We're we're just spreading the news and hoping that you'll be there and uh, pick up their tips and tricks. Yeah, and and that's the beauty of all this is that is some of the better turners in the world. And AAW went to these folks and it's restricted. They went to these folks to get a quality program that we can all benefit from. Um, and because of Zoom and the way we're doing this, or they're doing it electronically, and there's other bases too, um, what they're doing it is they're trying to get the best pe people they can in the time slots. So it's not like going to symposium where you can pick one of the five or six places that are demonstrating, or it's SWAT where they got six rooms going at one time. Uh, you're not going to get that. You're going to get one, one choice. There it is. You can't pop around. You're going to see a demonstration. Now, what we have, what Ronnie and I, and most of you folks have seen is the uh, Cindy Droz, the demonstration. And that's a great learning piece of how these things should go. Because Cindy did really good work. She covers all the, the procedures, tells you how she's kind of making the cuts, the sand, the finishes, and all that. And there are no commercials which is a, a very honorable thing because we all can't go buy the expensive tools and we shouldn't have to go buy the expensive tools. Uh, most of us can work with the tools we have or make those tools work the way we want them to work. So that, that AAW thing is great. Now I did hear this week that uh, because folks calling me about AAW's regular convention was canceled. SWAT, not going to happen. The one in Florida, not going to happen. The one in Missouri said they will make up their mind this week. We'll let you know as it goes on. Uh, and then somebody else told me about a pen one that's coming up in late fall. Uh, and they're afraid to go any further with the planning and programming because I've got friends in this world, and including you. Uh, but they have to buy all kinds of extra equipment, supplies, wood, glue, sandpaper, bottle stoppers, tools, and all that to bring to the symposium to sell. Well, if they stocked up on that, and I know a couple that did, they're now stuck with an inventory. Now, I'm not stuck for long. Uh, I got a note from my friend, uh, Ruth Niles, and y'all might have got it too, that she's got all, she got all these t-shirts. That's a big part of her, her program, these t-shirts. And they all got some cute sayings on them. Um, she can't do anything with them. They were all made to bring to AAW and SWAT. 
So if you're interested in something like that, think about the vendors that will be at AAW and SWAT, and there's piles of them, and contact them and say, you got any show specials for me? Yeah, that's what we do here. We, we spread the kind of word. Do you have any show specials? Um, I, I, somebody called me the other day about buying a new Chuck. And I put them on to somebody that sells Chucks at the shows. And they got a heck of a deal. I was I was recommending a Barracuda with no kit. Because I do recommend that. Now, get a Barracuda and then figure out what jars you want to add to it. Because sometimes you get stuff that you can't use. Uh, you don't know what I'm talking about? Look at the tools in your tool set and tell me what they all do. Um, but I recommend it just a basic Barracuda. He made the phone call and found out that they stocked up a lot of them to go to the AAW, and they're not. And he got that Barracuda kit for what he was going to get the basic Barracuda for. And that's a great chuck for a small lathe. Um, I think they go inch, inch and a quarter. And my caution to him and anybody else using a chuck like that, if you're going to use a chuck, make sure the adapter from the thread of the chuck to the thread of the lathe is steel, real steel. There's a whole lot of folks selling these, I won't say aluminum, but they're a softer product. Um, you don't want a soft connection between those two. You don't want a flexible connection. You don't want a bad thread connection. So if the manufacturer sells an adapter, get that one. If you see a sale on them, guess why they're in sale. Okay. Um, hey, Eddie, if you want, I've actually uh, can show exactly what you're talking about right now. Well, good. We looked for you a few minutes ago, Doug. Yeah, um, I get a little late. Yeah, that's okay. You military guys kind of, you know, if you were an Army, Air Force guy, you'd probably been right on time. <laughs> you know what they say to me when I'm late? They say, yeah. how you doing, first sergeant? All right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so hey, y'all. Here's here's uh, this was actually my very first chuck. So when Eddie was talking about that, I went ahead and grabbed it off the the shelf right quick. That's the kit, and um, so I did. I I grabbed it off of Amazon when I very first started turning, and I'll still use it occasionally because I have a, a bench top lathe that it fits on. And then I've had some situations where, uh-oh, I need something chucked up, and my one-way stronghold's already got something on it. And there's the adapter uh, to make it fit onto my Powermatic. That looks like a Powermatic or one-way. Uh, this one... What did you do? Yes, I thought, it, I thought it was Hurricane, but I'm, I'm not positive on it. I've, I've had it for so long, I, I honestly don't remember. My, my big chuck on my Powermatic is a one-way, and that's the, the one way to go. Oh, there's some other ones, Vic Mark and other stuff that's good out there, but I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the, the one-way. But if y'all weren't familiar with what he was talking about with the Barracuda kit, um, you can find those online, and like you said, there's usually some pretty good deals out there on them. Yeah, especially now. I mean, I don't say take advantage, but do what you can with the conditions we're living in. Um, we talked about freedom pens a minute ago, Ch uh, Doug, before you popped in. I was just logging in when you when you were talking about that. Yeah. Now, Doug is our major distributor. He's the only one we got. Um, Doug is military, active military. Air Force kicked him out. He had to go to uh, – you take care of the distribution, right? I do. How did they get received? Uh, the, the soldiers and the airmen that I've given them to, they absolutely love them. Um, I, so with the other branches, the way I can put them in the hands of the Marines and, uh, and other branches is uh, I'll go to the recruiting stations and I'll get them out via the recruiters that way. But I have a direct um, line to both. I lost your video, Doug. Now I think we lost your audio. Um, we'll pop it back up in a minute or so when I get it. Doug, wait, hold on. You might be yep. back. Am I back? Yep, there, there you are. are. I guess that's the downside to using my iPhone. Somebody was trying to call me. Um, so uh, with, with the Marines and other branches, I will work through the recruiting offices um, to make sure they get into Marines in other uh, branches. 
with the Air Force and the, and the Army, I have direct relationships through the Arizona National Guard. The National Guard is comprised of both Army and Air. So, and again, we work with the active duty, we work with the National Guard, we work with the reserve components. So I'm, I'm hand in hand with all of them, especially with the, the recent promotion I got, I'm actually at the Joint Force Headquarters. So Army and Air Force combined up there. Um, and, and that's how I, I, I get them into their hands. I, uh, as far as their reaction when they get them, it looks something like, and, you know, because, uh, most of them, they're not familiar with wood turning. They, they may have heard of it, um, but they don't really have an understanding. And when I, I give them the pen, and I, this is handmade for you by a wood turner that doesn't know you, that's where that, that lump in the throat comes, that, that good feeling in the chest of somebody really cares about me out there. And that's that, what that, you're supposed to do. For those that don't know it, if you send it to an Army troop, they get black ink. You send it to an Air Force troop, he gets blue ink. It's you know because the bus drivers only use blue ink, right? And then the Marines, you can just make it out of crayons. You'll be they're gonna eat it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah, glad you don't have any Marines at your base. Uh, <laughs> I am old Air Force or former Air Force, but every base I served in is closed. Don't know if that's got anything to do with it. Hey, Captain Eddie, this is Gerald yeah. Avery. All right, I've hold been, on, hold on, Gerald. I gotta, I gotta find you. Right um, here where the hand oh. is. Hey, I got you I've now. Been, I've been sending pens for many years. I used to send them to uh, Sarge Joe Kelly before he passed away. Yes. And I tell you what, you you you'll really get a good feeling on some of the replies that you'll get back. I've had emails. I've actually had letters from different people from Camp Leatherneck. Uh, aircraft carrier, Ronald Reagan, different different areas and everything. And a couple of them, they even said, I can't tell you exactly where I am, but if you're looking at the map, I'm over in this area. But anyway, you're touching people in, in a way that they don't expect. Someone here in the United States thought enough to make the pen and send it to them, tell them what it is and everything, and to thank them for their service. Some of these people don't have families. I had two guys over the years that told me they said the military was their family because they were orphans and they said they felt like the pen that i had sent them meant that they had one more brother now that meant a lot to me i really appreciated that it and does. sometimes the person that actually replies back to you if you go ahead and put your email address or something like that along with a pen in your name sometimes it's the spouse of uh, the soldier that will actually contact you or something like that. But it's very interesting to know, and also the fact that they appreciate anything, whether it be cookies or ink pens or what have you. But this ink pen is something they can take with them even after their time and service is over. And it'll be a constant yeah. reminder that it's some good, appreciate it's a good it. memory all the time. Um, I don't want to keep beating that drum, but I was of the Vietnam era. I came back from Vietnam in 71, late 71, walking through an airport, I was booed. Baby killer, yada, 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 yada. I just served six months in Okinawa, 19 months in Vietnam, and came back, and I still had time left. I went back to Guam. I spent more time out of the country than in the country. But to walk through an airport and get booed really hurt. We don't want that to happen to our troops. We want our folks to feel, feel appreciated, to know that we realize what they do is dangerous. They're doing it for our benefit. Um, we live by it, and it's important that you get involved. I'm not begging. I'm just letting you know. Um, this week, I had a couple of calls about from folks who want to know about shop-made rings. <laughs> I went off the deep end. I thought they were talking about wooden, big, big wooden rings and you know, platters and all that. Nope. What he was talking about is a shop-made ring. Now that's a piece. Of, oh, that stuff. That's a piece, a piece of uh, Paduke with a formica band, a solid cutter formica band, and I put it in. The guy is right. I put it in flat. Took it over to my plate and sander and sand it one side to get that 
that um, cert, that disc crooked. So when you, you turn around, it's it's a piece of art and rather just a toy. And then I mounted it on a shop made mandrel. My shop made mandrel was a piece of wood that would fit this, which that's a size 13, um, that would fit this and I put one slice in it. When I slid the pen on, it was tight fit. I drove a little wedge in the end to open it up. And then I could do all my finishing on the outside, all of it. Now, of what I skipped was, I finished the inside first to make it fit. You don't want to finish, make the inside last because you can't put wood back on. Um, so do the inside and then put it on the mandrel and finish it up. And this has got CA for a finish. Use whatever you want, but remember it's going to be contact with skin oils. Now that's the cheap way out. It's a beautiful system. It's nice. The piece of formica that's in there uh, is solid and the, the movement of the pen won't move, the movement of wood won't pop it apart. Now, this year, or last year, my wife wanted new wedding rings. Well, mine's not pink, it's hers that's pink. Uh, this is uh, a piece of epoxy, and it's on that stainless steel ring that you buy at a half a dozen different places on the internet, and it's nice, that size, so you gotta know what size you need, because you can't change that. And then you you check that same way, oh, I'm sorry, you take your epoxy and you put a hole in it that'll match that stainless steel out of line. And then you attach it to your epoxy with epoxy, epoxy with epoxy. And then you chuck it up the same way I told you about the other pen and you spin it, put the finish on the outside. Now consider you always have to look at that, that space right there, um, that low thickness. Because unless you want to do it all over again, you want to stay a little proud of that surface. And that, that one's a narrow one. Um, the one I made for me was a wider one with a different color uh, epoxy on it. Now, I could have done this with wood, just like I did the other one. i uh, done it with a, epoxy. Uh, you can do it with the port and cast. I'm throwing it out there, but probably Kim is going to do one something she cast. Because um, she's really good at that. Uh, but you can do these little rings, but size your ring first. If you need a ring sizer, they're like 60 cents on Amazon.com. And, and for $2, you get one that's got a tube the size of the old ring ad, so you can match the new one. So that, but shop made rings is one of these projects that I promote because it's a way to get you turning something that's cool. Now I got to do something right here again because it's 30 minutes after and. If you're looking at the screen, should say worldwide wood turners, wood turners.